Hello, I'm author Mara Pearl, and this is Novel Conversations. I have a very exciting guest, my friend Bill Bradley, a former NBA superstar, a former senator, a best-selling author, and now a playwright and the producer and performer of a wonderful new film called Rolling Along, which Bill wrote. So, Bill, so great to see you, and thank you very much for talking with me today. Well, Mar, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm very glad to be a part of this. Thank, thank you very you. much for focusing on uh, Rolling Along. I think it's a really beautiful piece of work um, for many reasons. Um, you know, it has many aspects, just like your life does, and yet you pulled it all together with a wonderful central theme. Uh, I mentioned this on your Instagram feed and you very kindly responded where I said, uh, it seemed to me that the river was a central metaphor for your piece. So could you speak about that? Sure. I grew up in a small town on the banks of the Mississippi River in Missouri. Um, and the river for me was uh, something that was alive from a very early age. It was always moving. It was in the center of the country, part of the country. You crossed it to get to the west, for example. It's a history of everything from, um, you know, the ancient um, river boats. In fact, the title of the show, Rolling Along, comes from Old Man River. Uh, from the uh, musical Showboat. And uh, to me, it had a very it, it had a very powerful meaning. As a kid, I would uh, run along the the railroad tracks that went along the river, training for basketball. Um, I then found later uh, when I, when I made any money with the Knicks, one of the first things I did was to buy, that farm that I used to run on oh. in Crystal City, Missouri, on the banks of the Mississippi. And uh, every time I'm there, I would go down to the river and watch it flow and think of our history and think of uh, how the courage it took to settle our country, the genius it took for our founders to write the institutions and the the goodwill it takes for us to hold this diverse society together. And it all comes together for me when I'm watching that powerful river flow from the north to the south. And um, so I thought it was an appropriate thing. I mean, showboat and roll and Old Man River was a big part of my childhood. My father was a big fan of that musical and also uh, worked on the railroad uh, before he became a banker. And so um, it was it was appropriate for me to choose that title. And I do think that the river is the central metaphor of the film. And it's also, I think, important for the country as a whole, that as long as things come together, we just keep rolling along. And that's the that's the message. A beautiful message of, of optimism, which is another central theme for you, I think, throughout your career. I'm interested in uh, the the play. Um, so you've right away referred to a musical. So that's a theatrical reference that's obviously been with you your whole life. Because it's just fascinating to me that, to me, it seemed rather suddenly you're working for a theatrical piece. And so you had to deal with staging and blocking and also then camera blocking, which is different than it is for theater. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm kind of fascinated by your process there. What was it that that drew you to the theater? Well, I was trying to think. Um, I had written seven books, and I could write us something, but I wanted to do more. And uh, I think probably my mother was somewhere in the background because she was, uh, you know, she taught singing to people and drama and so forth. And so uh, I thought it was probably more uh, powerful if it was a 
performed piece than if it was simply a written piece. I had that idea. Um, and I ultimately, there were angels that appeared along the way that helped me do it. Um, for example, one of the first things that I did was uh, I, I basically wrote the piece. Um, and I then took it all on the road and workshopped it all over the country by 15 or 20 different places. There'd be an audience, sometimes it'd be a living room, sometimes it'd be 100 people. Uh, and I remember doing it uh, on the Warner Brothers lot in LA. And I would read it and do the basically do it. After which uh, a man came up to me and said, uh, his name was Mike Tolan, and he thought this could be a film. And uh, Mike Tolan, of course, is the person who did the great Michael Jordan movie um, and is a claimed documentary sports filmmaker. So that was an inspiration for me. He was the first one. And so after I did it around the country, I decided, well, I'm going to, I'm just, I got to keep doing it. So I called my friend Spike Lee and uh, asked him, could I come? I've done this show and I'd like to come over and do it for you. And uh, so I went over to his office in Brooklyn and uh, he said, well, what do you need to do it? I said, how about a glass of water and uh, a chair? And he said, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. And I did it for him and at the end of which he had tears in his eyes. And I realized that uh, I had something. Yes. And uh, after I'd memorized it and done it, I had to do it every day because I didn't know where this was headed. So every day at 3.30 in the rec room of our apartment building in New York, I'd do the show. And it kind of got around. And if two people came, great. If eight people came, if nobody was there, I still did the show at 3.30 every day. Awesome. And one day, two people came in, a man and a woman. They were together. And it turned out that the man... Um, was Frank Oz, <laughs> of course, did all of Jim Henson's movies and was Yoda in Star Wars. And at the end of it, he said, you know, I'd like to help you do this. Wow. Spike had said, I want to help you do this. And Mike had said, I want to help you do this. Like you said, angels. So I had angels come along. And the final angel was two weeks before it debuted at the Tribeca Film Festival. And um, I opened the film with a song from Van Morrison that is entitled And the Healing Has Begun. Mm -hmm. Because my hope is that through this uh, film, there will be a healing process. And um, so I I did this for, for Frank Oz and I had the song from Van Morrison and then two weeks before Tribeca, Van Morrison's agent calls up and says, Van does not give you permission to do this song, to use this song. So what am I going to do? Oh, sorry. I call my friend Steve Van Zandt of the E Street Band, who I'd sent a version of this show six months earlier. And um, he said, well, Bruce did a song in the early 80s called Summer at Signal Hill. Maybe that'll work. Maybe so. so. <laughs> so I got the song and it did work. Yes. And so uh, he was the final angel that came along and, and gave me the song that opens the film. Oh, what a process. Yeah. And I really do. I think the angels have been your collaborators in bringing this whole project about. Well, yeah, I, I think that's true. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, the, the very real origin of this is I gave my papers, my political papers to Princeton. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did, did an oral history and interviewed people about my career in public life. And I had, um, there were about 50 or 60 people. And so I invited all of them to a reception. About 40 showed up and I stood up and told stories about each one of the 40. And one of them who was there was a friend of 50 years, a guy named Manny Eisenberg, who, who was a, produced 72 plays on Broadway. And he came up to me afterwards and he said, you know, Sounds a little bit like Hal Holbrook doing Mark Twain. Doing Mark Twain. You ought to work something up. And so that was the origin. I spent the next year writing it and then did the workshopping and 
ultimately performing and filming. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a beautiful process, very familiar to those of us in the theater. As you know, I've also got theater sure. history. No, you have a deep history of this performance. Well, what's so interesting, though, it is something like Hal Holbrook doing Mark Twain or um, like Julie Harris, who did Emily Dickinson. Um, I have a piece where I do Mary Shelley. Uh -huh. it, it's very interesting uh, to 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 delve in, but but we're playing characters or people who are not ourselves, but you are playing yourself. So in a way, you've created a new art form. What did you call it? A performative autobiography. Performative autobiography. I don't know that we've any of us have heard of that before. It's very interesting. Well, thank you. Authentic, um, uh, compelling, uh, yeah. revelatory. Yeah, I, I felt that uh, that's the way I wanted to sum up. And uh, I wanted to engage all of the, uh, you know, listening, words, performing. Um, and I, I think that's what I tried to do. And, you know, you'd be the judge, but... A lot of people think I did it. Yeah, yeah, you really did. And uh, the authenticity of the piece, the fact that you've you've put yourself right there, you've put yourself on the line. Um, yeah, well, the premise was that uh, you got to be honest about yourself yeah. in order for anybody to pay attention to anything else you want to say about anything. That's, that's for sure. And that's uh, for sure. Uh, particularly about yourself can sometimes be painful, can sometimes be funny, can sometimes be insightful. And I hope all of those are reflected in the film. Oh, they are. They are. I've enjoyed watching it twice now so far. I'm Thank sure you. I'll watch it again. There's, I love, there are layers and there's a lot of depth. So it's not something just to. Well, uh, you know, it's very funny because prior. Um, to this interview, I have a friend who's Japanese, and this will resonate with you. And he's one of the supporters of the film, mm -hmm. and he wants to uh, have it uh, translated into Japanese. And so I, uh, I, I had an AI version <gasps> in Japanese. With oh my wow! Book, right, and I played it for him and his wife and son and so forth. I didn't do it, just, you know, a minute and a half. And he said, no, the the movie, it, it doesn't really get the Japanese that well. It, you know, I, I understand, but it's not really good. He said, maybe my son can help. And his son, of course, has made movies. He did a movie called Perfect Days, which you may have seen, nominated for the Academy Award. It's about a toilet cleaner in a public toilet in Co in Tokyo. <laughs> They have these great public toilets that, you know, are works of art. They are. And mm -hmm. uh, so he's now taking it and uh, turning it into a Japanese subtitled film. And uh, oh, wonderful. so, you know, I, I hope it resonates with people every, anywhere because above all, it reflects our common humanity. It's a human story. It's my autobiography. But it's more than that. And as I was thinking about us talking and and as I was kind of finalizing the the actual uh, script I was sending him, I watched it again. And uh, I had tears in my eyes at four or five places because what I was saying moves me. And if it moves me, I hope it would move other people. Yes, and it certainly does. And I'm sure you will find an audience in Japan very aware, sensitive. I have no idea people. what he's going to do with it. He might be just sending it to his friends. Or who knows? Who knows? Well, keep me posted about that. Yeah. <laughs>